will happen in six months. Do you realize you may be keeping us apart for the rest of our lives? Do you want that on your conscience? My conscience? Well, why put the burden on me? Because you're deliberately trying to break us up. Me? Yes, you. Many a time we came through for you in a pinch. But if that's the way you feel about it, forget it. I guess I didn't mean anything to him when I took the blame for that anonymous letter to the newspaper accusing the mayor of collusion. And when Millie Walker phones the house, it's always, please, Carol, tell her I'm not home. I'll do anything for you, only please tell her I'm not here. Well, now, now don't take that attitude. And when he took all Hubert's taxi out to the football game. I hawked everything I owned to pay the repair bill. Now, wait a minute. You know I appreciated that. And when you let him have your father's tuxedo and he burned a hole in it, and you had to take the blame for it. Well, it's a time like this when you find out who your real friends are. Okay, okay. I know I'm sticking my neck out. What do you want me to do? Then you will help me. I knew you'd come through, Bob. Now, all you've got to do is get a car. Get a car? Mm -hmm. Where am I going to get a car? I know just the place. Come on. Say, here comes our pigeon now, Bob. Pigeon? You mean vulture. Oh, come on, you can swing it. Oh, why am I such a patsy? Hi. Hello, Millie. Hello, Dave. Hiya, tall, blonde, and repulsive. Nice to see you, Millie. Uh, Bob was just thinking about you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I like my men thoughtful. Uh, he was just saying that he hasn't seen much of you lately. That's an understatement. You haven't exactly been knocking my door down, Bob Harrison. I phoned you a dozen times this week and got a dozen different reasons why you couldn't answer. Well, I, uh, uh, I was going to call you uh, today, but, uh, well, uh, here I bump right into you. <laughs> uh, funny, isn't it? <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, he was wondering if you happened to be busy tonight. Now that you mention it, I do happen to have a date. Oh, well, uh, far be it for me to ask you to break a date. Uh, oh, it's nothing very important. I was just going to a concert with Lester Matson. Well, sure, sure. Have a nice time. Uh, maybe we can make it again some. Oh, concerts are so uninteresting anyway. Concerts? Now, why don't you two uh, take in a movie or, or just talk or... Um, or um, or uh, uh, go for a drive. Oh, now, that's an idea. Go for a drive. I don't know why I throw myself at you like this. What time? Eight o'clock. Uh, eight o'clock. You know, Dad's still pretty burned up about the time he took me to the beer joint. So maybe you better meet me in front of the drugstore. That is, if it's all right with you. Oh, why, sure, sure. It's perfectly all right. Okay, then. Hey, quick, do a disappearing act. Here comes the painter. Okay. Well, how do you do, Mr. Walker? Hello, Mr. Walker. Hello, Father. Hello, David. <laughs> and Robert. <laughs> Harrison boy again. Father told you to stay away from him. He just happened to be passing by. Bye. 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 Hi, you Bob. Oh, hello, Judy. Now, why couldn't she have a car? Nervous, Davy. Nervous? What are you nervous about? There's nothing to be nervous about. I don't know. I'm just nervous. I got a funny feeling like I'm gonna whoop. How do you think I feel? What's going on with those two anyway? Going on? Uh, what do you mean? Why are you all so happy on going to Midvale? You know, there's something fishy about this whole trip. Fishy? Look, would I lie to you? If I thought you'd made a date with me again just because I've got a car. Oh, as if I'd do a thing like that. As if you wouldn't. You know, Millie, I couldn't go out with another girl tonight if I tried. Would you repeat that, please? I mean it, Millie. It just had to be you. I don't get it. Why the sudden change? No change. I've always felt the same way about you. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Well, then, here we are. Pull up alongside of that house. Just as the... Bob! Hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't get any ideas. We're just along as observers. Oh. Say, you two are eloping. Yes, but don't tell anybody, Millie. It's going to be a secret. We want to get married before Davy goes to Alaska. Another girl of you tried, huh? Come on, we haven't any time to lose. Let's get this over with. Oh, Mr. 
Mr. Tweedle. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Conway. Uh, won't you come in? I'm certainly glad I found you home tonight, Mrs. Con... Oh, good evening, Mr. Conway. Now, see here, Tweedle, if you're here about the election, I don't need anybody to tell me how to vote. I'll mark my ballot the way I want. I don't like this electioneering. I'm not here about... That's it. the trouble with you fellas in city jobs. Somebody wants a favor and you can't be found. Along comes the election and you're right out on the doorstep. Oh, I tell you, the day will come. Everett, I think Mr. Tweedle wants to say something. Lucille, please, you keep out of this, will you? When it comes to politics, I know my way around. I've been all through this before. There are several things that I want to take up with the mayor. Mr. Conway, my visit here has nothing to do with politics. I don't like the way that... What? Mr. Tweedle, you look all worn out. Wouldn't you like to come in and sit down? Yes, I think I... better. Lucille, it's half past nine. I have something rather... rather startling to tell you. You don't say. Oh, put it there, put it there. <clears throat> I must ask you to prepare yourselves for a shock. In all my 30 years as head of the Bureau of Vital Statistics, when David came to my department for a copy of his birth certificate. Yes, that's what you're there for. You, you don't have to tell me what I'm there for. I'm not trying to tell you anything. Made an astounding discovery. Staggering though it was, I had presence of mind enough to recheck with the hospital records before coming here. Hospital records? See here, Tweedle, the taxpayers are handing out plenty of money for any trouble we're putting you to. Everett, will you please let Mr. Tweedle talk? Well, who's stopping him? Mr. Conway. At the hospital, it is recorded that a son was born to the Harrison family and the Conway family on the same day. As if anyone could stop him talking. That's right, Mr. Tweedle. David and Robert have the same birthday. Upon further inquiry, I learned that on the day the two boys were born, Mr. Harrison and Mr. Conway had one of their uh, customary arguments. Arguments? It was a massacre. Four attendants saved his life when they pulled me off him. Uh, is this your signature, Mr. Conway? Where? Uh, it certainly is. Yes, it is. What about it? Well, Mr. Conway, this signature is on the receipt for the Harrison baby. What? In the excitement of the fight, the father signed for the wrong infant. Therefore, the hospital is not responsible for the switching of the children. I never switched a child in my life. Mr. Tweedle, are you trying to say that... Yes, Mrs. Conway, the baby that was brought to you was the Harrison baby. But, 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 but that's impossible. Tweedle, you're drunk. Mr. Conway, I have never touched a drop of hard liquor in all my life. I warned you to be prepared for a shock. According to these records, in black and white, David is not your son, Robert is. Tweedle, did you hear what, what I hear? Oh, oh my... Oh, look, 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 he's going to faint. Now, Everett. No, 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 I'm all right. I'll be all right. Look here, Tweedle, don't you think we ought to talk this over? Don't you think we'll think it out before we go any further? Sorry, Mr. Conway, there's nothing more to be thought out. But, but, but I'm on my way to inform the Harrisons, right? Good night, Mr. Conway. Oh. Everett! Well, don't stand there like that. Come on. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that his kid is my... Uh, mine? Do you mean to say that that baboon son could be in my house for 20 years without my knowing it? Mr. Conway, will you please stop shouting at me? I'm only doing my duty. Why don't you go back to the department where you belong and not make a lot of trouble for people? Why, that overgrown string bean of yours! Don't you throw vegetables at me! Please, please, quiet! And don't you order me around. Remember, you're just the servant of the people. <laughs> quiet! <laughs> now, what is it, Mr. Tweedle? This is completely out of my hands. It is a matter for the court to decide. Well, uh, let's get on with the ceremony now. The book, Annie. Where's the book? Shall I? Yes, thank you. February. Mm -hmm. And when are you born, young man? The, uh, November. November. February and November. Aquarius and Scorpio. Oh, too bad. Too bad. All right, all right. Everything is all ready now. Well, I never knew it to fail. Scorpio and Aquarius. It won't last. Will you stop? Will you stop that stuff? The last couple we had came in here loving each other, and they went out hating each other. Now, let me see. The, the groom will stand right about well, here. I'm the bride. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you do? How do you do? I got a feeling this isn't going to help Pop's hay fever any. Yeah, well, let's get started. Annie, the license. Where, Annie, where is the license, please? Here it is, Lemuel. Where it is, Lemuel? Here. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Well, now, here we are. 
Oh, David Conway and Carol... Oh, wait a minute. I can't perform this ceremony. This license was taken out yesterday. Oh, yes, sir, in the Midvale City Hall. Yes, but young man, don't you understand that... Oh, excuse me. According to the laws of this state, you must wait three days, and then the license is published, and then comes the execution. But we wait... There'll be no buts about it. Come back Monday. There'll be no marriage tonight. Yeah, it goes four dollars. You and your Scorpio. Now, Everett, are you sure that's where you were standing? Lucille, I am positive. Now, look, here's the baby. Here's the baby right here. Now, the infant was brought in through a door on the left there. Right down to here. Then this big moron moved over to the right, over to here. I moved over here. Will you please keep your big mouth shut for just one minute? How can we reenact the scene with you blabbing your head off? You perfect idiot. You don't know where you were standing. Don't tell me I don't know where I was standing. All right, where were you standing? I was over. I was... Oh, yes, you think. I tell you, Marion, the whole mix-up started when he grabbed the paper from the nurse. And the nurse was standing right up there. Look. Everett, stop blaming Henry. You were just as much at fault as he was. Now, just give us the facts. Somebody will listen to me. I can explain exactly what happened. Shut up, Henry. Now, who took the first baby? He <laughs> did. Oh, good heavens. Now they don't know who took the first baby. Well, how could I have taken the first baby when he was next to the door and I was here on the left? That's the right, Henry. How can you expect him to remember what happened 20 years ago when he can't remember right now which is his right or which is his left? Oh, I give up. Oh. Hey. It's as far as we go. Well, thanks, Millie. You've been swell. You won't tell anyone, will you, Millie? Not a soul. Oh, of course she won't. Millie's much too a girl to do anything like that. Listen, Egghead, don't try to soft soap me. The next time you're in a taxi, I'm charging union rate. Hey. Come in. I, uh, I think I'll go on home. You too. Imagine bringing up a boy as your own in blood for 20 years and then finding out. Yes, yes, Miss Perkin. Two cans of applesauce, please. Well, all I can say, Lucille, is that I wouldn't want to bring a strange boy into my home who'd been raised by another family. You have a duty to the community as well as to yourself. And just as important, you are employees of Walker's Farm Implements Incorporated. <clears throat> it would be a shame after 25 years in the business to find yourselves without jobs. I expect you to handle this matter with the utmost discretion. Yes, Walker. Yes, that's all. Oh, well, this is the most awful thing I ever heard of. Well, it's positively terrible. I'm still in a daze. I, I can't believe it. it. It's like a bad dream. It's worse. You can sleep off a bad dream. But I don't know where I stand. You don't know where you stand.